Welcome to Lecture 9 of BIB 102 New Testament Survey. The next two lectures are going to be focusing on the Gospel of John. Today we're going to get into the introductory matters and some very unique features that are found within this Gospel. So let's get started. Roman number 1, the introduction to the Gospel of John. Letter A. This Gospel account was written by John. Now, the authorship of this gospel has actually been challenged more than any other gospel account, but both the internal evidence and the testimony of early church leaders has easily refuted any objections to John being the author. So let's talk a little bit about John. Number one, John was a fisherman. Now, he was the brother of another disciple, James, and they were both sons of Zebedee. Now, they received later the nickname Sons of Thunder, because in Luke 9, it's recorded that they wanted Jesus to call down fire upon the Samaritans because of how they reacted to Jesus. But Jesus obviously rebukes them for this, but the nickname stuck. Number two, his mother, Salome, may have been Mary's sister. According to these passages I've given you, there is some speculation over this, but if so, then this would make John... Jesus' first cousin, which also may explain why they were so close. Number three, he was one of the original 12 disciples. In fact, he is one of the inner three disciples that were privileged to see the transfigured Christ and to be near Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. John is actually at the crucifixion of Jesus and is even given charge over his mother. Not only that, but he was one of the first disciples to visit the gravesite of Jesus and to see the body missing while the grave clothes were still present. Later in his life, he spent the last years in Ephesus, where tradition states that he became the leader of the Ephesians church there. And later, he was banished to the island of Patmos by the Roman emperor Domitian. And it was there that John received the vision of the book of Revelation, Later, it's recorded that he returned to Ephesus and died there. Letter B, this gospel account was written sometime between AD 85 and 100. I mean, probably around AD 90, as some of the, the best sources and theologians have stated. Letter C, this gospel account was written to display Jesus as God. And we've already hit on this in the introductory lessons on the gospel, so we won't belabor that point, so let's move on to letter D. This gospel account's key word is believe. And John is recorded in John 20, verses 30 and 31, saying that he wrote this gospel so that others would believe, and believing, they'd have eternal life. In fact, the word faith is never used in this gospel account because the word faith and believe are actually from the same root Greek words. And then letter E, building from Point D, this gospel account was written so that its readers would believe. And as I already quoted to you from John 20, 30, and 31, it was so that we would believe and then have eternal life. Now let's look at Roman numeral 2, unique features of the gospel of John. Letter A, his gospel account is over 90% unique, which means you can only find 10% of John's gospel in the synoptics. Letter B, his gospel account emphasizes signs more than any other. And according to John 2 verse 11, it says that these signs or miracles, more accurately translated signs, were done to manifest Jesus' glory and inspire belief in him. Letter C, his gospel account does not include any parables. And again, it fits with the theme of displaying Jesus as a God, that you wouldn't need those parables to relate to mankind. Then letter D, his gospel account excludes the genealogy, the birth, youth, baptism, temptation, transfiguration, agony, Gethsemane, and ascension. Why? Because in his purpose statement to present Jesus as God, he does not need to include those things. And lastly, letter E, his gospel account reveals that Peter was a disciple who cut off the high priest's servant's ear, Malchus. Now again, we've talked about this before, the synoptics say a disciple cut off a high priest's servant's ear. John is the one to directly come out and say it was Peter 
who cut off his ear, and the name of the person whose ear got cut off was Malchus, which we will find out later in the, lecture, the next lecture that that is significant to know who Malchus was. Roman rule three, unique material in the Gospel of John. Letter A, six of John's eight recorded miracles are unique to John. The first one, number one, is only John records Jesus turning water into wine. Now in this story, Jesus and his disciples go to a wedding and the party runs out of wine. Mary comes to him, his mother, for help, obviously implying that she must have been in charge of this aspect because it was her responsibility, which also means Jesus probably was related to the groom since that was his family obligation. And Jesus puts a little separation between them to let her know that he's not there to follow her orders. However, he will help. So he commands the servants to fill six water pots completely with water and serve it to the people. Now the ruler of entertainment loves the wine so much, he has the bridegroom come to him, which we call just a groom now, and commends him for saving the best wine till last. And according to John 2.11, this actually caused his current disciples that he had at this time, which was only six, to believe on him. Number two, only John records Jesus healing the nobleman's son. In this miracle, a nobleman comes to Jesus because his son was at the point of death. And when he gets to him, Jesus says to go back to where he lived because his son lives. When he gets back, he finds out that his son was healed the exact same hour that Jesus said so. Number three, only John records Jesus healing the impotent man. Now this impotent man was by a pool called Bethesda, which is literally a pool used to clean sacrificial animals. He and many other sick and disabled people were there hoping to get in and into the waters at a certain time because the tradition was an angel would come by, disturb the waters, and the first one in would get healed. The Bible records that he had his infirmity for 38 years, so he explained to Jesus that he had no one to help him in when the angel troubled the waters. Jesus told him to get up, take his bed, and walk. He does this and the Jews got upset because he broke their Sabbath laws. Jesus declared that the Father works on the Sabbath, so does he. That made them even more angry because he called God his Father. Number four, only John records Jesus healing a man blind from birth. Now while Jesus was escaping an angry group of Jews who wanted to stone him because he declared himself to be the I Am. Jesus stumbled upon a man who was born blind. Now his disciples questioned, by whose sin this man became blind? Was it his or his parents? Jesus replied that it was done for God's glory. And Jesus then combined his spit with dirt and rubbed it in his eyes and told him to go to the pool of Siloam to wash in order to receive sight. The man did this, and he received his sight. Now this angered the Pharisees, and not even the man's own parents would tell them what happened, so they just told them to go talk to him. The previously born blind man, all he knew was that he once could not see, but now he can. And the last point for today's lecture, number five, only John records Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Now, while Jesus was in Jerusalem, a runner was sent to tell him of Lazarus' serious sickness. And Lazarus was the brother of a lady named Mary Magdalene and her sister Martha. When the runner gets to Jesus, Jesus actually informs him that he was actually not sick to death. After two days, they left for Bethany to see Lazarus. Unfortunately, when they get there, they find out that Lazarus had been sick, or excuse me, had been dead for four days, showing that even by the time the runner got there, the man was already dead. Martha finds out Jesus is coming, so she runs out of the city to meet him. She declared that if Jesus had been there, that Lazarus would not have died. Jesus assured her that he will be resurrected, but she misunderstands this as referring to a future resurrection. 
After this, Martha left and told her sister Mary about Jesus coming. And Mary immediately left with some of the mourners who were helping mourn her brother's death that followed her to see Jesus. When she gets there, she falls at Jesus' feet and weeps. Jesus asks where Lazarus was, and then he weeps with her. Why? Because he was meeting her where she was in her pain. They then got to the tomb, and Jesus told them to remove the stone. But Martha protested because he had been dead for four days and would have stunk. But Jesus persists. They remove the stone, and he calls out his name, and Lazarus comes forth. This left many mixed emotions and mixed feelings about the event. Many believed on Jesus because of this, but some actually sought the Jews to put both Jesus and Lazarus to death. Well, that brings us to the end of Lecture 9 for BIB 102 New Testament Survey. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me.